the delegation that included civil rights leader Martin Luther King. A new order is coming into being and an old order is passing away. It seems to me that uh, this is fit testimony to the fact that eventually the forces of justice triumph in the universe and somehow the universe itself is on the side of freedom uh, and justice. Part of the rightful heritage of man, a heritage denied to colonial Africa until now. The Gold Coast was renamed Ghana. can alter the course of that destiny.
female Asante ruler known to have commanded a national army. She assumed the mantle of responsibility to preserve the Asante kingdom when no male ruler would step forward. Nanaya Asantua organized a war against British imperial forces. The elderly queen mother is credited with safeguarding the golden stool, the symbol of Asante unity, and fostering pride in the Asante nation. She is an international symbol of dynamic female leadership in a bloody struggle against colonial rule. Independent, united Africa a strong, bountiful Africa. We told of the marvelous resources of this continent, of how we were going to take them and use them for the development of our own people, how we were going to be able to invite the children of Africa, wherever they were, to come back and share in the riches of this very, very rich continent, beautiful continent. How, how, uh, how significant for women, and especially for uh, women of, of Africa, that you won this award, and what will it mean uh, for the future as we go into the 90s now? Actually, to women of uh, Africa, this is a, a great honor. Not only an honor, but it's a recognition of their contribution towards uh, economic as well as food. Uh, in Africa. My purpose is uh, to help develop the literature of my country, both adult literature and juvenile literature, because we need to do this, you know, in the process we are in of self-rediscovery and, uh, you know, um, building up our sense of our own identity and putting this out in every direction we can, through education and through the theatre. when the East African country of Kenya erupted into civil strife after contested election results were announced. Former Ghanaian President John Kufour was the first mediator to be sent to the country since he was the sitting head of the Africa Union. The reports that came across were not good reports, so killings of people, destruction of property, and within a short space of time, over a thousand people had lost their life. As head of the African Union, I felt a duty to come to Nairobi to plead with the two sides, only to find that there was a, a irreconcilable situation between the government and the opposition. I had only a very limited time. I think after the second day, since the time was running out for me, I had a, a brainstorm and Kofi Annan's name came into my head. I, Kofi Annan, solemnly swear to exercise in all loyalty, discretion and conscience the functions entrusted to me as Secretary General of the United Nations. Congratulations, sir.
when Kofi became the Secretary General of the United Nations, he entered into the murky political arena of war and peace. Being born among the Ashanti people, his cultural roots and the Ashanti outlook in life could have played a big part in shaping his leadership skills. Our tradition was founded on democratic practice. We were raised on, on uh, principles like rule of law, respect for human rights, uh, freedom of thought and expression and of association. So Kofi becoming an international civil servant at the United Nations and his liberalism continued with him. He looked globally at things, always talking of uh, respect for human rights, tolerance. That was our tradition. Just before the height of the Iraq war, Kofi was given the title of Busumuru by King Osei Tutu II, the current Ashanti king. Where would we be without our smartphones? Some might be happier, but most of us probably couldn't even count how many times we use them to send pictures and video. And as we celebrate Black History Month, Don Baker joins us with a one-on-one -on -one interview with one of the engineers who's responsible for revolutionizing the Internet. Well, Dr. Thomas Mensa worked along with three other men, names you should know, Bob Moore, Don Keck and Peter Schultz to invent a laser fiber optic system back in the 1980s. They had no idea how it would change our way of life. Uh, without these four guys, the internet won't work because we invented a laser-based fiber optic system that allows anybody to send a picture to somebody else's cell phone. Without that invention, you cannot send a tweet, you cannot send an Instagram pictures, no Facebook. So we let Facebook, Google, and all those things happen. Uh -huh. Because before we did it, everything was using copper. Uh -huh. You would stand in front of ATM machine for about eight hours. But now you go in and get things quickly because of that invention of fiber optics. Now, um, of course, leaving university with no money, not even credit cards, I went back home and I studied manufacturing. Realized that, uh, heck, I don't have any money to set up industry. And I want to work for myself. And realized I had a PC. And uh, the PC, in a certain sense, was a factory. It could make software. So, started developing software, sitting on my bed, in my bedroom at my parents' house. And uh, parents were out of the country, so I had you know, free reign for a couple of years. Now, we sold software, got, got a couple of partners. We sold software, we bought more computers, and sold software and bought more computers. It's like, heck, this thing is going really well. We did this for 10 years. We wound up with a company that was basically the leading software operation in West Africa. And my partners were very happy. We were sitting in Ghana, and suddenly we got this thing working. We're ten doubling our turnover every year. And it was wonderful. Now, as a matter of policy, we avoided, given what everybody has said, we avoided uh, any government involvement, no government contracts. We don't want them. That was our attitude. Until 10 years passed, the company was so big, we now employed 70 people, and realized that to sustain what we were doing, the private sector in Ghana was too small. So we did two things. We started exporting into Nigeria, into Togo, into neighboring countries. And we started saying, well, maybe we have to go and face this government, bite the bullet and face the government sector. And uh, that was the beginning. We hope that you enjoyed this informative video on Ghanaians, showcasing how rich and important our history is to the people of African descent. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can add a comment and share our content. As an important member of our community, we want and need your support. You can visit our website at ghanaiansinbc.ca and click on the membership page. Your membership will help with year-round activities and programs.